Hi, my name is James Pederessi. I'm a professor of mechanical engineering at Binghamton University, and I also serve as vice provost at the university. My experience with engineering education goes back to about 1980 when I first taught um, Introduction to Fortran Computing. So I've been teaching at the university level for, um, for a few decades by now. I found that when I was teaching the capstone design course and working with um, my teams, the student teams, that they needed a lot of reference materials. And so they were going off to the library, sometimes they could find the material, sometimes they couldn't. And so when access engineering became available, it was really uh, a game changer. All the reference materials that they needed to uh, be able to work on their design was located in one website. And it really allowed them to focus on the design aspects. And they had great vetted reference material that they could trust. And from my point of view, it was a great learning experience because these are the materials they're going to use as practicing engineers. So it was a great way for them to progress through their engineering education and get to the point where they're now going to be acting as, as um, actual professional engineers, using reference materials, focusing on design, and working in a, in a team format. I would say baby steps, right? You don't have to jump in and, and throw out the textbook right from the get-go and, and only use access engineering. I would say find material in access engineering that really fits unique aspects of your class and then integrate those seamlessly. Um, it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to integrate it into the class it makes it easier for the students to sort of um, go in and out from the textbook to access engineering, you know, get the appropriate materials there and, and continue on with the class. And then over time, you'll discover more and more material. What I found is that the students were finding additional material and bringing it to the class. Now that's exciting, because at that point, you know, my, my work here is done, right? I've taken the students from the point of view where they learned fundamentals, now they're applying the fundamentals, and they're going out and discovering new information, new knowledge, and bringing that back and sharing. When I was teaching a senior level elective, we were looking at some design issues with structures. And in the past, the loads are typically given in the homework problem in the back of the book. Real question came up is where do these loads come from? So it was a great exercise for the students to use access engineering to go and explore and figure out, well, where do these different types of loads come from? Where does the wind load come from or various other types of loadings? And that I think was very insightful. I, I remember the next day in class, Students were discussing this and, and they talked about how with the uh, introductory level material, the loads are just given. And as practicing engineers, they're gonna have to figure out where those loads come from. So it's, uh, it's an interesting example that oftentimes as educators, we forget that we had to learn that at some point. So to be able to guide the students through that transition from student to practicing engineer is pretty exciting. So one of the features that I really have taken advantage of are some of the videos that are available on the platform. I've often assigned them as homework problems, uh, if you will. They view the video, maybe I'll give them some work to, uh, problems to, to solve, and then they come back in the class and we can discuss that. I can address any questions they might have. Sometimes just having someone else explain the problem is, is very beneficial. So the videos have been great. There are some Excel worksheets on there that uh, in my discipline and, and solid mechanics are very useful, uh, beams and so forth. So the students can go in and use those to very quickly get at solutions. Once they have the theory, to be able to use something that will allow them to focus on the design, 
or exploring what if scenarios, very beneficial. And then of course the reference materials, I find uh, absolutely fantastic. To be able um, in a sophomore level class to talk about different types of loads and then to actually pull up the professional references that they will be using in their careers that describe that exact same thing. It adds a legitimacy to what I'm doing in the classroom so that it's not just something made up, it's really tied in with their future professional practice. So for me and, and my students, I think the greatest value is that the platform has on it vetted professional reference materials. And this allows the students, as I guide them through my courses, it allows them to really develop professional practice approaches to problems. The references are available to them. I can bring them into the classroom and we can discuss them. And as they work on their projects, they are actually starting to behave more like professional engineers, practicing engineers. I think it's really important as part of uh, our role as educators is to not only guide them through the content in the four years of an undergraduate program, but to prepare them for professional practice. And a big part of that is the ability to leverage materials that are out there, professional reference materials, so that they are using the correct materials, not just something they found on the internet, but well-vetted professional materials that they can use and help them grow as professional engineers and help them uh, really excel in their chosen discipline. From my perspective, uh, teaching both um, sophomore level classes and, and senior level capstone and, um, and electives, I find the ability to have a wide variety of very interesting problems, real world problems, is fantastic. At the sophomore level, a lot of times we use the problems in the back of the book, but to bring in a real world example and talk about design, if let's say a, a beam, for example, and talk about, well, there are design codes and standards that they'll use as professionals. And to be able to bring that into the conversation early on is, is very beneficial. And of course, at the capstone level, it's uh, absolutely essential. They're gonna use these materials to be able to uh, guide them onto that and have them explore and come back with questions. It's really helping them uh, make that next step as, uh, as professional engineers.